welcome back to another Java tutorial video and in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at reading and writing files to Java. We're going to be using the print writer, the file writer, file, and the scanner classes to read and write files in Java. A file can be read and written to in Java, usually either a binary or a text file. Writing data to files can store information when a program terminates. That way when the program starts up again, it loads all the information, like a database. To read and write a file, you need the file, file writer, print writer, and scanner, or the buffered reader classes. To read data from a file, you can use the scanner or the buffered reader class to read each line of the file. Then you can process that information and perform tasks with it. Before using the scanner class, you must first create a file object to handle the file. So file, the file, gets the value of new, file, and then you enter the file's name. Now notice in this example that it says sample.txt. To be able to just put the file name, that file must be in the same location as where the SRC folder is in NetBeans. If the file is not in the same level as the SRC folder, you need to put the entire path of the file. After you create the file object, you can create the scanner object by passing the file object as its parameter. So scanner, file scan, gets the value of new, scanner, and the file. Using the scanner class methods, you can read the contents of a file. You can get the entire line of the file and process that line, or you can get each word on its own. The hasNext method checks if there are more lines or words to be read, and then returns true if there are, and false if there isn't. To write to a file, you use the print writer class, and then you use the file writer class to prevent from deleting a currently existing file when you use the print writer. Using the print writer alone, a file that already exists will be deleted before writing to it. To prevent that from happening, you can create the print writer object by passing a file writer object in its parameter. So an example, file writer, write file, gets the value of new file writer, then the name of the file, orders.txt, and then true, meaning that we will be appending to the file. And then print writer, print file, gets the value of new, print writer, and then write file. After creating the print writer class by passing the file writer object, you can call the print methods of the print writer class to write to the file. These print methods are the same as the system out print methods that you use normally. At the end of the program, before it terminates, you must close the file for it to be written. If not, nothing will happen. So now that we've had a quick overview of the print writer, file writer, and the file class, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples in Java. So let's take a look at an example of how to use the print writer, file writer, and the file class. That way we can read and write from a file. So before you begin, you need to have these import statements, the Java IO, and I'm using the asterisk because there's three classes that are being imported from IO. Now instead of writing them three times, it's just importing all of them. Then we need the scanner. And I'm going to be using the JOption pane because I'm going to be doing some user prompt so that way we can add stuff to the file. So once you have that, you can create all of this, which is create a file and you pass orders.txt as its parameter, which is the name of the file. So file, a file, the name of the object, the name of the variable, gets new file and the name of that file. Now remember, to be able to only write the name of the file, you must make sure that that file exists in the same level as the SRC folder. An example like this. This is the NetBeans projects folder. Here's NetBeans projects. And inside here is my Java tutorials project. And then inside this folder is the SRC. The orders.txt folder must be at the same level as the SRC. It cannot be inside of it. Now you could use any other file that you want. The only thing is that you need to put the entire path name. Next, after you put the file, you can create the scanner. So scanner read file gets the value of new scanner and then you pass the file object. After the scanner, you can put the file writer. So file writer write file gets new file writer and then the name of the file 
and then you put true if you're going to be appending to the file or false if you're not going to be appending to the file. Preferably you should always append to the file so that way it doesn't overwrite or create a new file every single time. And then lastly, the print writer. Print writer, print file gets the value of new, print writer, and then the object write file. So I already went ahead and created a file and I already populated three orders into it. So we have the first and last name, then we have the order number, and then lastly we have the items. All of them are separated by a comma. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the current orders on the file. So here's where I'm using the scanner class method has next. That way it tests while the file has more items that can be read. And while there are more items that can be read, print out the next line. Let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. So the current orders on the file, Cesar Diaz, 1001, 10 NFC tags, and then the other person, and then the other person. Now, this is using the next line method. There is another method in the scanner class called next, which will only read one word in that line. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out the next line one, and we're going to leave next instead. We're going to see how this is different. Let's redo it. And you'll see now that it prints, it takes everything in on one line. And since I'm using print line, it's going to put them all on a new line. So we have Caesar, then Diaz, then 1001, 10, NFC, tags. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need it. And I'm going to uncomment out the print line one. Now, let's write stuff to the file. Down here, I already wrote some stuff that will write to the file. Let me also uncomment this one. And it's going to be using the J option pane, and it's going to be asking the user if, to, if they want to add another order. Now, we're going to be using the show confirm dialog method. And the show confirm dialog has a pop-up window that shows yes, no, and cancel. And this method returns an int, the int being whatever it is the user entered. So yes is 0, no is 1, and cancel is 2. So while prompt is equal to 0, or while the user clicked yes, it will print out adding an order to the file. It's going to print it out to the output window. And then it's going to ask, what's the name on the order? First and last name. It's going to ask, what's the order number? And then it's going to ask the item description. After that, it's going to print to the output window the order details. And then it's going to write to the file using the print method from the print writer class. Now, if you take a look at this, this line here is exactly the same as this line here. And this is what I was saying before that the print and print ln methods in the print writer class are the same as the system out print and print ln methods that you normally use. So anything that you write in the print ln could also be written in the print for the print writer. And then finally, it's going to prompt the user if they're going to add another order again. After that, if the user says no, it'll close the file so that way you can write to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. And before we take a look at the example, let's go back to the file and remember that there are only three items in the file so far. Let's go ahead and run it. And let's add a new order. Enter the first and last name. We're going to add Chris. Chris L. We're going to add order number 1004. We're going to continue after 1003. And we're going to say 1, 2 gigabyte RAM chip. Should we add another order? Should we add another order? Yes. Let's add Mike R. Order number 1005. And then the description, we'll have them buy 10 NFC tags as well. OK, add a new order, no. And when it finishes, build successful, let's go back to the file. And we'll see that the file has been modified, load it up. And there you have it, Chris L with 1004, 1, 2 gigabyte RAM chip, and then Mike R, 1005, 10 NFC tags as well. And when we rerun the program, it's going to run this line of code again, and it's going to print it all out again. So let's run it once more and have it loaded up. And as you'll see, let's put no here. 
and as you'll see, Chris L and Mike R are listed. Now before I conclude the tutorial, I want to show you guys an example. Take a look at how there's five items inside this file. Now I'm going to go ahead and replace write file here with orders.txt. And this is going to simulate what happens if you don't pass write file. And if you remember from the PowerPoint, if you don't use the write file, it's going to replace that file and it's going to create a new file. So anything that was written on it before will be deleted. So remember again, there are five items here. Let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, current orders on the file has now been emptied. Let's not add a new order. And let's go back to the notepad and you'll see that it's been modified. Do I want to reload it? Yes. And you'll see that it has been completely emptied out. That's why it is ideal and recommended to use the file writer object inside the print writer. This concludes today's tutorial. Hope you guys learned a lot about the print writer, file writer, and the file class. As you can see, it was actually pretty easy. There was not a lot that you had to do. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.